Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayya anil suniq Hayya anil suniq Hayya anil fuliq Hayya anil fuliq الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي يحب من إباده متوادئين ويقره من خلقه متخبرين لا إله إلا الله يذل ما يشاء ويهدي ما يشاء إلا سراط مستقيم هو الذي ألف بالإسلام بين قلوب المسلمين وأوجب اهتهادا وحرم تفارقا في كتابه المبين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد <clears throat> that is, all praise is due to Allah, the God, who loves humility from his creation or creatures, and he dislikes arrogance. There's nothing worthy of worship except Allah, who guides to the straight path whom he pleases and allows to stray whom he pleases. It is he, Allah, who has united the hearts of the believers in this religion of Al-Islam, and he has also forbidden that we become separated in this religion of Al-Islam. And we also witness that there is nothing that deserves worship except Allah, that he is one, alone, he has no partners, no associates. That whatever he wants to come about, he can make it happen. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we also witness that Muhammad the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, is his messenger the prophet, a noble servant and messenger of God, and we thank Allah every day for the beautiful gift of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He is the seal of all prophets mentioned in the Bible, mentioned in the Torah, as well as it is given to us in the Quran. I greet you all with the greetings of peace, with an understanding that the real peace comes only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> Thank Allah for Friday, a very, very beautiful day, the most important day of, of our week, the most important day of our year. It is the most important day, period. But this Day is a day of remembrance of Allah and to call the people in unison back to the way of striving towards the path that Allah has set for us.
Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَائِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةٌ قَالُوا أَتَجَعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يَفْسِدُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّهُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And mention, speaking to Muhammad the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I will make upon this earth a successful authority, a vicegerent, a khalifa. They said, the angel said, will you place upon it one who causes mischief, corruption, and sheds blood on the earth? While we do declare your praise and sanctify you? And Allah says, I know that what you do not know. Now, these are the angels who are close to God. And they question God not out of doubt, not even out of curiosity. But they question God so that we may have an answer for our own selves. The question is for us. That's what I'm saying. It's not for the angels. The question is for us. Because remember when Allah says something happened in the Quran, it's not the angel that said it. Allah said it. And Allah is communicating that for us, for our benefit, not for God's benefit. He's communicating it for our benefit. That if you want to know your reality, if we want to know who we are, something so special that it's above the angels, that you may not feel that you are due that type of respect, that type of honor, but Allah says what? I know what you know not. You're not capable of knowing that what I know. But who is Allah forming? Ja'ilun means that it's not complete yet. It's still in the works. God is still doing this thing. What is Allah doing? What is Allah creating? What is Allah forming? So he is making in the earth the Khalifa. Now this term is a Quranic term, Khalifa. This term did not exist in Arabia at that time. They did not have this word Khalifa. So when Prophet Muhammad was relaying this word to the people, he had to teach them what this word means because they didn't have it already. <clears throat> so the Quran came and revealed this word, Khalifa. So Khalifa is a particular design that God created, that he fashioned with both of his hands, a particular design that he wants us to pay close attention to because this is our role. Now, the Khalifa is one who, when Satan tempts that being, disturbs that being, try to call that being to a new life, introduce that being to a new life. And if that being moves or swerves or 
comes off the plan of God, then his soul will register it. And his soul will want to return back to the plan and to the way and to the path that Allah set for him. We may hear in the word Khalifa, Khalifun, Khalifa, to go back. So this is, this is relaying to us, this is saying to us that in life, we're going to have obstacles. In life, Satan is going to test us. He's going to pull us. He's going to distract us. But when he moves us, that's not going to disturb our soul. Our soul is going to register it. We know this. We know when we're going out and, 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 and something happens, we feel it in our soul first. They say, that's not right. Right? Something ain't right about that one. I can sense it. See, you can even see that with a baby. I just had a, alhamdulillah, I just had a, 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 a daughter a week ago. And <clears throat> we know that with a baby, when something, a presence come in, in, around that baby, in the proximity of that baby, and it's not right, the baby register it. In its soul, it register it. And it cries out. Say, I don't like this. That's the purity of the soul, to be able to sense that, to be able to feel that, and then to call out and say, I don't want this around me. The closer we become to God, the closer we become to the, uh, uh, to the Quran, to the way of God, the pure our soul becomes. We eliminate those distractions, right? So the plan of Satan is to deter the Khalifa. That's his plan. To take the Khalifa off track. And it comes to a point as when Adam was in the garden. Allah gave special instructions to Adam of what not to do. But Satan approached him so much so that Adam was no longer registering the call from his soul. He could no longer hear his soul. The call of Satan became so loud that Adam couldn't even hear his soul. We know this in the Quran. Allah says, and what will explain to you what the day of noise and clamor is? What is the day of noise and clamor? This is the day that we're living in today. To bring it back. The day that we're living in is a day of noise and clamor. With everything that when we drive down the street, everything we approach is so loud that it takes us off the path of God. The path that he established us on. So much so that we don't even know we're moving off the path. <clears throat> I was at the, the gym. I'm saying this because maybe you don't believe me, so I got to bring it home. I was at the gym with young brothers in our community. And I heard one of them say, you know, the way I am, I, I think I asked him. He was boasting on his money, you know, how much money he makes, you know. And I asked him, I said, well, all that money, you should be able to have a dowry and, you know, have a wife, you know. Start a family, right? And uh, he says, well, why would I want to do that when I don't want to be tied down? I could travel. I don't have to have nobody telling me what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And he laughing, and he trying to get some of the other Muslim brothers to laugh with him, you know? And I thought about it, and I said, <clears throat> this is not him. This is not the, the brother that I remember from high school. He 
he's some he's 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 a, a vessel, but he's speaking somebody else's tongue. That's not him. That's not the one I remember. Because so much noise have entered into him, and he listened to the noise. Now he's speaking for the, the entity that, that, that persuaded him in the first place. So we can become vessels for our own enemy. Or we become vessels for God. So, I went further, you know, and I told him, I said, well, you know, whenever you live in a selfish life, I say, you know, that's haram. Whenever you live in a selfish life, that's haram. And he said, well, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily see what's so selfish about, you know, wanting to travel. And I said, well, you're thinking about yourself. I said, not a Muslim, a believer, whenever we do anything, it should not be about ourself. Even if it's reading, you're not reading just for your own benefit. You read it so that you may benefit so you can help others. You see, but when we take on acts like drinking, drinking doesn't help nobody. It really don't even help you. Smoking don't help anybody. So he, you know... <clears throat> And I may be relaying too much, but let me tell you, this is, this is reality. The young brother started speaking about how he wanted to smoke hookah and drink. And thought it was funny. And I haven't been really in Atlanta, that, you know, I just moved here six months ago. So it really bothered me. Really bothered me. Because I knew that it wasn't a local issue, it was a national issue, a global issue. That the world has been pulling so much on our youth, subliminally, we don't even notice it. So the role of the Khalifa is one who, when you fall off track, You'll come back. You'll find your way back. And when he pulls you, you'll find your way back. And he pulls you, you'll find your way back. That's the role of the Khalifa. And it does it so much so that it becomes a part of you. That whenever you called off track, oh Allah, please forgive me for my sins. Have mercy upon me. You move right back on. That's the Khalifa. It says in the Quran, Fadallahuma bi ghururin falamma daqa shajarata badat lahumma sawatuhuma wa tawfiqa yakhsifani alayhima min waraka al jannati وَنَادَاهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا أَلَمْ أَنْحَاكُمَا أَنْ تِلْكُمَا شَجْرَاتِ وَأَقُلْ لَكُمَا إِنْ شَيْطَانَ لَكُمَا أَدُوُّ مُبِّينَ So he made them fall through deception. And when they tasted of the tree, their private parts became apparent to them, and they began to fasten them together themselves from the leaves of paradise. And their Lord called to them, did I not forbid you from the tree and tell you that Satan is to you a clear enemy? <clears throat> I'm reading this because We are in a time where it has become so apparent that Satan has been pulling on us so much so that we are now working in his way. 
As a community, we are working in his way. You want to know why we stagnant? Nationally, globally? It's because we're not, we're not free. Allah created the human being to be free. But Satan wants to imprison you. Not in necessarily in a jail cell, but imprison you in the mind. <coughs> Where you think that you're free. You walk around and think that you're free. Like the young brother said, I want to go where I want to go. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to have any social obligation to you, to my community, to my mother, my father, my family. I don't care who raised me. I don't care what community I came from. I just want to be free. Listen, that wasn't him talking. That's, that's, you could turn on the radio and hear them saying that. That wasn't him. I knew it wasn't him. So all of us have it in our soul to be able to come back. A lot placed that in us. He said, so, he said, uh, 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 what you call it? Hookah is not haram. I said, brother, don't you know that a hookah is three times worse than a cigarette scientifically? It can hurt you three times worse than a cigarette. And you telling me that that's not haram? I said, anything that hurts your life as a human being is haram. Anything that harms your life, harm. Listen to the word, harm, haram. Take an A out, what you got? If it's harmful to your life, if it's harmful to your family, if it's harmful to your community, then it's haram. Allah doesn't want that for you. So he was speaking somebody else's tongue, wasn't he? Hookah's not haram. <clears throat> yes, it is. Because it's harmful to you, and it doesn't benefit anybody in life except you. And it doesn't even benefit you. It harms you. You perceive that it's a benefit to you. That's why you take it in. You think that you're benefiting. But it's really hurting you. Isn't that what Allah says in the Quran? He says that there are some things in life that you may not like that is good for you. And there are some things in life that you like, that you enjoy, that you want, that is pleasurable to you, but it's bad for you. And when I told him this, I went a little deeper too, though. You know, we, you know. If you know me, I, I had to let them know. So you want to do what you want to do, and you got Muslim sisters in our community struggling, age 30, 35, can't find a man in their community, so they got to go outside of their community because you want to do what you want to do? Oh, man, people thought we was going to fight in it. But we didn't. I say, now, look, you know I'm telling you this only because I love you. You know I wouldn't tell you this if I didn't care about you. Yeah, you're right, Sharif. You're right, man. So listen, man. <laughs> I said, you can have all of that money now, and it could be all gone tomorrow. And what you got? Nothing. So Satan is pulling hard on us. And for those who have felt feel comfortable, you feel like you can manage Satan. You. I've been in this world for so and so years. I don't been through X, Y, and Z. I don't did this. I don't did that. Listen, he pulling on your child. He pulling on your grandchild. And your life doesn't matter unless you have your child and your grandchild to live on your life. Who's going to write your story? Who's going to document your life? If your, your successor is being oppressed in the prison of Satan, Khalifa, one who's able to come back. <clears throat> you know, I feel like Allah really has his hand on our community. When you look at, um, 
when you look at our history, look at where we come from, and you look at where we are now, if you're looking at it historically, we're like in a womb. We're in a womb. And right now, it's a, it's a struggle. It's a time of hurt. It's a time of pain. Because <clears throat> the, 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 the older generation in this community is still fighting. You know? They still fighting and been fighting. But it's the younger generation in the community that's behind them. Can you imagine this? Think about, think about in the ring. So I like to go to the gym in the morning. But think about this. You in the ring. And let's say your enemy or your issue is in the middle of the ring. And your community is circled around that issue. And the people in the front are the elders. And they punching. <laughs> hitting that issue. But when they're hitting the issue, it's not as effective as it was when they were young. And the people behind the elders on the outside of the, 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 the circumference, the people on the outside are the younger people. And you know what they're saying? Why y'all hitting them so soft? Hit them harder. We need more. Why don't we have bigger mashes? Why don't we have bigger schools? Why don't we have bigger communities? Why ain't y'all doing more? Why y'all hitting them so soft? But the older generation still hit. They still fighting. Arthritis, stomach hurting, head hurting, but they still fighting. But it's the younger generation we need to reach because they've been tricked, they've been duped, they've been confused that they don't even see their own social obligation in this community. They have been detached from the mother. Listen, this was a, a plan in slavery to detach the baby from the mother and to keep it away from the mother so that it would never feel any social obligation, any love, any compassion, any mercy to the mother. If something happens to the mother, it looks at the mother and says, why don't you fight harder? If the master goes and rapes the mother, it says, well, you don't let him rape you. Fight harder. You see how abnormal that lifestyle is? So if somebody attacks the masses, somebody attacks the schools, the children have been detached. They say, why are you letting them rob you? Why are you letting <laughs> Why the school failing? Instead of saying, you know, back up, get away, you know? If you love your mother so much and you see somebody damaging your mother, you're going to pick up a gun and blow the man's head off. Because that's how much you love your mother. Our community, the um, umma, is a derivative of um in Arabic. So our community is our mother. Our community gives us the milk, the sustenance, to grow big, to grow strong, so that we may come out of South, outside of that community and bring sustenance back to the community. <laughs> but we've been tricked. And Allah says in the Quran, fight the schemes of Satan. Fight them. This is Master Mu'minu. But it says in the Quran, Kada Aflaha Mu'minu. Surely the believer is already successful. That means you don't have to wait for the success. The success is here. You don't even have to question the success. The success is, is here. So if you are a believer, if you align yourself with the plan of God and you are a believer in God, then you are already successful. 
You see why Imam Muhammad, Imam War of Deen Muhammad, he says, to have faith in God, hard work, labor hard, faith in God, hard work, simple living, high thinking. Why? Why? Because if you have faith in God, if you align yourself as a believer in God, then you have to do some work. It's the next thing that follows. You can't just say you believe and not do work. That's what it says in the Quran. <laughs> you have to labor hard. You have to have faith in God and then go and work. But you can have faith in God and you can work hard. But if you ain't living a simple life, you become corrupted. All, all your wealth becomes spoiled. You see the order? You can have faith in God. You can have high, uh, uh, hard work. And you can live a simple life. <clears throat> but you probably won't have that many gains. You know, some people say, yeah, don't, you know, don't, don't work hard, work smart. So now you understand why it's high thinking. You have to have high thinking. The shortcoming of the believer and the one that works hard and the one that lives a simple life, the shortcoming is that we don't have high thinking. We have to think bigger than this. We have to think bigger than just having a, 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 a mastered on, on, on just a block. We have to think bigger than that. Not to seek dominance, but to call people to the way of Allah. We have to think bigger than that. We should have schools, masjids. Muhammad said that the masjid is what produces the school. He said, and whatever you produce in life should always be bigger than you. He said, if you are an artist, he said, your art should be bigger than you. It should be greater than you. He said, because it's going to be here longer than you. It's going to affect more people than you affect. So when Prophet Muhammad, he said, when Prophet Muhammad went to Medina, peace and blessings, went to Medina, he said the first thing he did was what? Establish a master. And after he established a master, what did he do? He established a school. And he became the first teacher within the school. So the school is produced by the master. Therefore, the school should be bigger than the master. The master shouldn't be bigger than the school. How is that possible? And then the school produces businesses. Like me, I'm a product of the school. I produce businesses. So the business that I create should be bigger than the school. <laughs> because the school produced the business. This is the order. But the downfall is when we think too small. We got to think big as a community. We can't ask for uh, uh, $10,000, raise money for $10,000. We can't ask for $100,000. Let's ask for $10 million, $100 million. And let's work and let's utilize our resources. Let's connect with other communities and make it happen. We sell ourselves short when all we do. Allah blesses us with the Quran. Allah blesses us with the Sunnah of the Prophet. Allah blesses us with the leader, Imam Warfdi Muhammad. And all we want to do is ask for ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. And Allah says in the Quran that He opened the world up for all. Nas. Just people in general. It don't matter whether you're good, whether you're bad. It don't matter whether you're a believer or disbeliever. Nas. Anybody, any person. People, Allah has opened the world up for you. So you could be an agent of the devil and still get the benefits of this world. You could be calling people to a life that hurts them, that corrupts them, and still get all the benefits of this world. So when I see them doing that on, on TV and whatever, it's, Allah say he, he get it to you. Ain't no shock to me. <clears throat> But then he also says, he says, Nas, anybody. So that means who too? Us too. 
But then he also says that for the believer, you get the double blessing. You could get the benefit in this life and the benefit in the next life. So they cut off from the benefit of the next life. Don't let, let's not let the works of our enemy put us to sleep. This should excite you. This is the Quran. It should excite you. It should motivate you. It should make you want to get up and run out and make something happen. Because this is the life that Allah wants for us. We can't pass it over like that. We come too far. From our history, as, as, as <clears throat> not starting off as slaves, but just say slaves here in America. From our history here in America, what we come through, the sacrifices we had to come through. From civil rights, from Jim Crow, from everything all the way up till now. You got Black Lives Matter, we, 2016. And the world is watching. The whole world is watching. They seeing what's going on. They want to know who, why in 2016 is this still happening? As, <clears throat> as Muslims, as believers, as Americans, and even black Americans here in America, we should not depend on anyone for our salvation except Allah. And Allah says in the Quran that he does not help you until you help yourself. So we look to God and then God say, help yourself. You got work to do. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi akhirati hasanatan wa akina adhab al-nar. Amen. Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. So, you know, I told myself <clears throat> that one of the things that I want to do is that I want to totally commit myself and submit myself to the will of Allah. I want to see for my own life if I can operate just as a vessel for what Allah wants for me to do. I don't want to do nothing in this life unless Allah wanted me to do that. I submit myself to that. When I write a book, it's as if God is writing that book because all I'm doing is doing what Allah asked for me to do. I don't want that book to come from me. They say, Sharif, man, you wrote an excellent book, beautiful book. What I say? All praise is due to Allah because I submitted myself. I want to be a vessel for God. I don't want to write this book and say that it came from me. Nothing comes from me. <clears throat> so, we are in a time where we are becoming, and we don't even know it, we are becoming <laughs> idol worshipers, and we don't even know it. All we think about, all we talk about, heard a brother in the mass say, all he think about, all he talk about is Donald Trump. I never seen nothing like that. Man doesn't even talk about his wife like that. As a human being. A man doesn't even, or a woman doesn't even talk about their husband like that. All they do is talk about talk. Because if they did, then you would say, you know, you might, you might be worshiping that woman and you don't even know it, brother. You might be worshiping that sister. So the media fills you up. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Don, they fill you up, and all you can think about is him. 
You go to sleep thinking about them. You wake up thinking about them. When you eat, you're thinking about them. You're thinking about forming businesses around them. What's your plan for them? It's another form of slavery. We got to get out of that. Allah already freed us from that. We've been freed already. We don't need to go back into a trap. Nothing should occupy our life more, our attention more than what Allah wants for us. And what Allah wants for us is community life. So let's not mention nobody until we start talking about how to save our schools. Let's not involve ourselves in, in, in what's going on in politics until we start doing for ourselves right here in this community. It makes absolutely no sense. And you get around people like that and you meet with them and then you, you praising them and talking about them and they're going to say, well, where you come from? Well, what you doing? Next thing you know, they, they end up disrespecting you, the person you looked up to so much. You don't love them, cared for them, talked about them. And when they see you have done nothing for your own life, they start disrespecting you. <laughs> and then you lose your life. <laughs> you know. You know. Let's, let's, let's do what Allah wants us to do, not what nobody else wants us to do. Let's start doing what Allah wants us to do. He united the hearts of the believers in the religion of Al-Islam and he forbid, forbidden that we become separated. Allah says, come together on common terms. You can have a fallout with somebody, but find out where it's common at. My child go to the school, your child go to the school. Listen, our focus should be on the school, not what happened, you know, between us. You know, let's focus on that school. Let's build up that school. <clears throat> so after this, I'm going to work. Okay, you know, I mean, that's an obligation. Allah tells us in the Quran. He tells us that we should be coming from work, and then after, we should disperse back into work. So if you're... Whatever, you know, whatever we're going out to do, let's go to work. It's so much work that needs to be done. And if we don't know what to do, then to go to the Quran for guidance. I heard one thing, one thing, and it shaped my whole life, just one. It gave me purpose. One thing gave me purpose. But here we have a whole book. Allah giving us a whole book. The downfall is when we think small. We have to think big. So big that it even scares us. It's so, the, 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 the idea is so big that it scares us. So much so that we know we cannot make it happen unless it comes from God. That's how big our idea should be. It shouldn't be something so small where you know you could do it yourself. Because once you do it, you be like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I made it happen on my own. Yeah, because you was thinking small, you know. Do something that's so big. And if, if it's too late for you to do something that's so big, help somebody do something that's so big. Help somebody do something that's bigger than them, bigger than themselves. <clears throat> that's not harming them. I thank you all. Alhamdulillah. I appreciate you. I love you. I respect you. And as I said, I am a servant of Allah. And when I stand in front of you, I'm talking to my own self. I'm hype. I hype myself up. I came in here tired. I came in here sleepy, worn out. As I just had a baby. I was already working late hours. <clears throat> and now, alhamdulillah, I stand up here and I talk to my own self. And I motivated my own self. I reminded my own self of my own purpose. Because sometimes we could forget. Sometimes we could get taken off, you know? But as Khalifa, we come back. Khalifa, we return. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi akhirati hasanatan wa kina adhabna. Rabbana la tuzi qulubna ba'da tadaytana. وَحَبْلَنَا مَلَدُونَكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ وَحَابٌ آمين إقامة الصلاة
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله